Hello and welcome wrestling fans. This is Wrestling Jeopardy. I'm Kevin J. Callis. Yeah! And allegedly, this is where the big boys play. Look at the adjective, play. So let's go to the board now and check out the categories you'll be quizzed on. Starting with WCW announcers, NWO members, WCW mini movies, WCW tag team names, and last but not least, WCW Goofy Gimmicks. Gorge, that's just what I wanted. And if this is your first time playing, well, thank you for stopping by. And if you're a veteran, welcome back. Here are the not so extreme rules so you understand exactly how to play this interactive play along trivia competition. My only request is that you leave a comment below with your score so I know exactly how you did. Oh, it's gonna put some butts in the seat. Hi, kids. All right, let's jump right in and kick things off with WCW announcers for 200, a stellar broadcast career that spans from Mid-South Wrestling through his run in WWE and now AEW. However, his work in Jim Crockett Promotions and WCW is considered his best and most passionate. And that would be good old JR Jim Ross. Which brings us to NWO members for 200. This wrestler joined the New World Order in late 1996 when his former Money Incorporated tag team partner Ted DiBiase offered him a spot in the faction. Man oh Manischewitz, I could go with so many different answers here. Mike Rotunda, Mike Rotundo, Erwin R. Scheister, IRS, Michael Wall Street, Captain Mike Rotunda, or VK Wall Street. Is Wall Street joining the NWO? Moving on to WCW mini movies for two. For the first mini movie, the man called Sting was encouraged to spin the wheel, make the deal in preparation for a stipulation match versus Jake the Snake Roberts at this 1992 pay-per-view. And the stipulation that was widely panned was the coal miners glove match at the Halloween Havoc pay-per-view in 1992. Sting, I knew you'd come. Uh. And we're on to WCW Tag Team Names for 200. Name the team of Marcus Bagwell and the Patriot. And that would be Stars and Stripes. Wow. And let's finish off the 200 point round with WCW Goofy Gimmicks. Oh boy! Hailing from the Emerald City, this silver haired character was managed by the Great Wizard, aka Kevin Sullivan, in a creepy old man mask. The event Super Brawl 1991, a day that will live in infamy that saw the debut of the great and powerful Oz. Welcome to Iron! All right, we're starting off the 400 round with WCW announcers. Before Eric Bischoff took his gig with WCW, what Minneapolis-based wrestling promotion was he working for? And that would be the AWA, the American Wrestling Association. And we're on to NWO members for 400. Originally a part of Raven's Flock, this NWO member was the real life nephew of Hulk Hogan. It's a pretty sweet gig when your uncle has a lot of power at his job. The correct answer here is Horace Hogan. Brother, brother, brother. Moving on to WCW mini movies for 400. For the second mini movie, The Man Called Sting accepted an invitation to join Big Van Vader prior to Super Brawl 3 at his White Castle of Fear located in this United States mountain range. Come to the White Castle 
of fear and play Vader's game! That John Denver's full of shit, man. <laughs> and the answer here is the Rocky Mountains. Rocky Mountain High, Colorado. Brings us to WCW Tag Team Names for 400. Name the team name of Alex Wright and the Disco Inferno. These two were just a couple of dancing fools. All right, let's close out the 400-point round with WCW Goofy Gimmicks. What dog? Arachnaman, Brad Armstrong's web-slinging superhero persona, came to its abrupt end when this comic book company sued WCW for copyright infringement. Your friendly neighborhood Spidey didn't take too kindly to Arachnaman, and neither did Marvel Comics. All right, 10 down, 15 to go. Let's kick off the 600 point round with WCW announcers. Nicknamed the Professor, this announcer brought the smart fans' perspective to the call, and at times, there was no one better. And the answer here is the Professor Mike Tanay. And that brings us to NWO members for 600. Tori Wilson was brought into the NWO to seduce this wrestler. Originally introduced under the name Samantha, Tori Wilson was brought in to seduce David Flair. All right, moving on to WCW mini movies for 600. And you found the daily double, so tally up your score right now and see how much you want to wager on the daily double clue from WCW mini movies. All right, time's up. Let's take a look at the clue. For the third and final mini movie, The Man Called Sting and Davy Boy Smith were almost blown to bits before their Beach Blast 93 match versus Sid and Vader, who at this time were being billed by this name. And the answer here, who were the masters of the power bomb? Yeah! Alright, we're on to WCW tag team names for 600. Name the team name of Ice Train and Scott Norton. No, it's not Flapjacks and Ice Cream. The correct answer is Fire and Ice. And let's close out the 600 point round with WCW Goofy Gimmicks. Alongside his valet symphony, this wrestler was lowered on a platform from the ceiling while he played the piano. Wow! All right. His valet Symphony, who was Ryan Shamrock in the WWF. The correct answer here, who is the maestro? All right, 15 questions down, 10 to go, plus final Jeopardy. Let's hop back in to WCW announcers for 800. Upon Hulk Hogan's arrival to WCW, this announcer was promptly relieved of his duties due to real life heat with the Hulkster. The body was not brothers with Hogan. I don't think so. Jesse Ventura was given the good old heave ho out the door. Tonight on Monday Nitro, Pasta Mania is good old my Hulkamaniacs running wild. And we're on to NWO members for 800. This third generation NASCAR driver was recruited to join the faction and even drove a custom designed NWO stock car in several NASCAR races. True story, when I used to work in radio, I once interviewed Kyle Petty. Oh! 
I'm Ricky Bobby. If you don't chew Big Red, then f you. Moving on to WCW mini movies for 800. Besides the man called Sting. This was the name of the only other recurring character in this infamous trilogy. The correct answer here is Cheatham. Wait a minute. Who are you? Brings us to WCW tag team names for 800. What was the team name of Bobby Eaton and Steve Kern? No, they weren't called the Fabulous Midnight Skinners or the uh, Beautiful Doinks. The correct answer here is Bad Attitude. And closing out the 800 point rounds oh, yeah. with goofy gimmicks, perhaps most famous as one half of Jim Cornette's Heavenly Bodies, along with Dr. Tom Pritchard, Gigolo Jimmy Del Rey joined WCW in 1996 and was called Jimmy What? And that would be Jimmy Graffiti. What is this? All right, we've reached that time of the episode, the most difficult round in Wrestling Jeopardy, the thousand point round, the steel cage begins to lower, the ominous music begins to play, you need to pop on your thinking caps. All right, let's kick it off. WCW announcers for 1,000. Known more for his 1-800 collect calls mocking Bobby the Brain Heenan, this announcer would go on to become the voice of Tony the Tiger. Who is Lee Marshall? Good there, great. Brings us to NWO members for a thousand. In late 1997, this wrestler left ECW to join WCW and instantly became Scott Hall's lackey. That would be Louis Spicoli. Closing out mini movies for a thousand. Eric Bischoff has more than once discussed on his 83 Weeks podcast that this woman was in charge of pay-per-view marketing in the early 1990s. And her name was Sharon Sedello. And we're on to the final clue of WCW tag team names. You're, ne you're never going to get this one. Name the team of Dirty Dick Slater and Mean Mike Enos. That would be rough and ready. And the final clue of the regular Jeopardy round comes from Goofy Gimmicks. The Dungeon of Doom was a cadre of cartoonish villains who assembled in a haunted fortress where the master, portrayed by this Hawaiian wrestling legend, sat on a throne looking like Jabba the Hutt. Whoa! Ah, it's not hot! The dude was covered in cobwebs and chalk and his forehead was all scarred up from years of just gigging himself. The correct answer here is King Curtis Iakea. <laughs> Hopefully you scored well with those 25 questions, but this final Jeopardy is no laughing matter. Let's go and find out what the category is. WCW Pay-Per-Views. During WCW's run, much like any other wrestling promotion, it had some amazing events take place and quite a few disasters. All right, so think about how much you know about WCW pay-per-views and place your wager. All right, time is up. Here is this episode's final Jeopardy clue. In no particular order, name the three pay-per-views WCW held in early 2001 before being purchased by WWF. Good luck.
in no particular order, name the three pay-per-views WCW held in early 2001 before being purchased by WWF. On January 14, 2001, from the Conseco Fieldhouse in Indianapolis, Indiana, WCW put on Sin. On February 18, 2001, from the Nashville Municipal Auditorium in Nashville, Tennessee, WCW put on Super Bra. Revenge, I'll give you that, if you said Super Bra. And the final WCW pay-per-view occurred on March 18, 2001, from the Jacksonville Memorial Coliseum in Jacksonville, Florida. The title was Greed. And that does it for another episode of Wrestling Jeopardy. If you like what you saw, please give this video a massive thumbs up and consider subscribing. My name is Kevin J. Callis, and I'll see you next time.